In this doubles lesson, I wanna answer the question, when is it okay for me to cross to my partner's side of the court or to the other side of the court to take a ball away from my partner? So we do that a lot with called poaches on the serve, obviously. So um, this is a match from the US Open. We have Gabby Dabrowski here, Juju almost at the net. And if they were to call a poach, Gabby would serve. Uh, and then when Krejcikova returns, Juju would poach here. But that's not what I'm talking about for this lesson. For this lesson, um, what we're talking about is when is it okay uh, during the point or during the rally for uh, Siniakova on the other side of the net here to uh, cross over and take a ball. Um, and I'm going to play the point out here, and then we will kind of walk through why Siniakova makes the right decision here. Okay, so you can see they won the point there. And like I said, a lot of club level doubles players will divide the court like this. So this is my half and this is your half. And that's really not how we should be thinking about doubles. So it's kind of an oversimplistic way to view the doubles court. If you Listen to my interview with Craig Shaughnessy, which I'll link to below this video. He likes to use trapezoids um, to divide the court. So uh, it looks something like this. So the net player covers this area, and then the baseline player would cover this area in the back here. Um, so that way, if there's a lob over the top here that's short, she backs up and covers the overhead. If there's a drop shot here that's short, she will come over here and cover it. Um, and it's a little bit better way to uh, to divide up the doubles court. But in general, um, we want to know when is it okay to uh, to cross kind of over to your side. And in this case, uh, Dabrowski hits a good serve to uh, Krejcikova, who hits a really good return low to Juju almost backhand volley. And then this is the ball we're talking about. So Krejcikova clearly has a path to get to this ball. And at the club level, almost everyone who is playing the ad court here is going to just stay right here and let their partner come up here and get this. But Siniakova uh, knows better. She is, um, in my mind, the best doubles player in the world. And uh, she runs and takes this ball from Krejcikova. So why does she do, do that? What is kind of her decision making behind that? So there's a few things to think about. Um, one is Siniakova has a forehand here. So especially at the club level and even at the pro level somewhat, um, you're going to have a lot better control over your forehand uh, than your backhand. So that's one thing that they can do to kind of upgrade the shot. Right now, if Krejcikova comes and gets it, it's going to be a backhand for her, um, and she'd probably make contact somewhere around here, versus Siniakova has a forehand, and she's going to make contact somewhere up here. Let's go ahead and play this through. Yeah, so she's able to get a little bit closer. Um, so that's the second point. She can get to this ball faster. So why is that important? The reason it's important is because as soon as almost hits this volley right here. You can see Siniakova is looking at her and she knows that they are about to be way out of position. So what happens is almost hits this volley. She still has all her momentum going this way. They're totally out of position. And there's this huge gap in between here for Siniakova to hit the ball through. So she knows the sooner they can get to this ball, the better I see, uh, my partner over here a little bit further back than me. I can get to this ball faster. I have more reach with my forehand than she does with her backhand. So I'm going to end the point on this shot. So if you think about it, um, for a lot of club level doubles players, doubles players, since uh, since they're going to stay here, what's going to happen is almost is going to have more time to recover. Uh, this gap's not going to be as wide, and they'll be able to stay in the point. But in this case, Siniakova takes that ball quicker, gets it right in between them. Dabrowski can't quite reach it, and she ends the point. So she Siniakova is getting out of position here, 
but she's the goal here is to end the point on this shot. She is not expecting the ball to come back. So that's another thing we want to take into consideration. It's okay to cover a ball like this for your partner if you're ending the point on that shot. If you're not going to end the point on it, then you're going to end up out of position. For example, if she miscalculated this and Dabrowski was able to get to this backhand volley a little bit easier, she would have put it over here, and then Krejcikova would have had a very defensive running backhand that she probably would have had to lob or, or maybe wouldn't have even been able to get to. Uh, but Siniakova reads it correctly, knows she'll be able to get to this ball quickly with her forehand, get it through the gap uh, as quickly as possible, and in the point like that. So that's how you want to think about crossing during the point um, with uh, your doubles partner and taking the ball away from them. A, do you have a forehand versus their backhand? So in a lot of cases, uh, you'll be moving from the ad court to the deuce court. Um, this is why one of the reasons I like to play in the ad court because I love to be able to read these balls. Uh, two, can you get to the ball sooner than your partner? Uh, and three, are the opponents so out of position that you'll be able to end the point on that shot? So that's three things to consider um, when you're thinking about moving across and trying to uh, take a ball away from your partner. So uh, that's it for this video. Thank you for watching. Uh, if you have any questions, leave them below in the comments, and I will talk to you next week. If you want to become a smarter doubles player and start winning more matches, then join the Tennis Tribe Doubles Strategy Newsletter. Every single Thursday, I'll send you a new doubles tip or tactic that you can use in your very next match. And when you join, you're going to get a free guide on how to play with more confidence and start dominating at the net in doubles. My name's Will. I'm the founder of the Tennis Tribe. And over the last five years, I've worked with players at every level of the game, from USTA 3-0 players all the way to Division I college programs, as well as some of the top 10 doubles players in the world. And on Thursdays, with this strategy newsletter, I share that knowledge and advice that I've gained over the years with you. So to sign up, you can go to thetennistribe.com. And again, you'll get that free net play guide when you join.